Hello, my name's Caroline and this is a movement style video, Yoga for Inner Space. This is a follow-on video for a uh, practice sequence towards Bhujangasana Cobra, uh, which opens the front of the body and prepares the body for backbending. If you're a beginner at yoga, ideally you would do the first sequence, which is a 30 minute sequence, and follow on to the sequence, which is a much stronger sequence and a more dynamic sequence. If you're an experienced practitioner, I'd say it's fine to come on into the sequence. It's quite a short sequence. We're going to warm up a little bit first with an Utkatasana, Ardha Uttanasana, Uttanasana flow. And then we're going to come into more opening the front of the body practices, back bending practices. There will be potentially some strong movements in the practice, but always work at the level and with the option that's best suited to you, where you don't feel any strain and you can easily support the positions that you're undertaking. Let's begin by coming to the um, back end of the mat and we're going to assume the Tadasana, the mountain pose position. So let's just think in terms of our heels aligned with our sitting bones pretty much. And then from the heel towards the ball of the foot, stretching and lengthening out through the foot. We're going to let the weight work between the heel and the ball of the foot and just the pad of the little toe engage to the mat as well. Let's spend a moment to think about the body space, to feel that the feet are able to ground, allowing the feet to, from the inside, soften, thinking about the feet relaxing from the inside so that you really feel the weight of the feet beginning to merge with the floor, with the earth, with the mat beneath them. And as the feet gradually grow heavy, let's connect with our tailbone as well and just allow the tailbone to also begin to sink, imagining that the tailbone can grow heavy and that it's gradually now earthing moving in the direction of the heels. And with the feet nice and relaxed and the tailbone sinking, we need of course to put a little bit of energy through the leg muscles to keep us in standing. So just gently drawing energy up through the leg muscles, feeling the muscles draw up through the kneecaps and the fronts of the thighs, through the backs of the thighs lifting right up into the low gluteal region and the gluteal region. And at the same time, thinking about freeing space through our spine, each vertebra lifting and releasing away from the one below until we arrive with a sense of elevation in the crown of the head. And then from here, we're going to breathe in to let the arms flow up in front of us and as this happens really try to release the muscles on the sides of the ribcage and through the sides of the waist so the spine keeps lengthening. We thought about this a lot in the earlier sequence, the one that pairs, the paired sequence with this one. And then as we really we're going to breathe out to bring the hands through to the heart centre, keeping the waist lengthened, keeping the sides of the ribs lengthened and thinking in terms of the spine staying really open and long going to breathe in here and breathe out here and once again as you're really breathing in to stretch up let the tailbone sink down and the crown of the head elevate exhalation letting the arms come back to the sides so we need to find that balance between strength in the arms and ease in the movement of the arms so that the sides of the ribs and front of the chest keep stretching strength in our legs and we squat against that strength and contraction so an exhalation to Utkatasana, breathing in here, breathing out here, and once again drawing up on the inhalation, letting the spine really open up, and exhalation, the arms coming back to the side. So let's work that through twice more. Inhalation, energy drawing up through the legs and the spine, strengthen the legs, really use the backs of your thighs to produce this position. Deep lift in the lower abdomen, navel pulls to the spine, spine lengthening, and once again an inhalation to bring us up, and an exhalation to release the arms down. So we're going to flow into Utkatasana again, this fourth time. Exhalation to Utkatasana, breathing in here, breathing out, 
And now, as we breathe in, we're going to just adjust the position to Ardha Uttanasana. So thinking about the spine staying really long and drawing a little bit more open through the backs of the knees, feeling a little bit of lengthening and opening in the backs of the thighs. Spine stays long, breastbone and spine hug towards each other, navel pulls to the spine, keep opening the waist out of the hips. And as you aim to keep your back really long and lengthening, opening up through the backs of the legs. Let's say four times, breathing out open, breathing in to soften, breathing out to open, breathing in to soften. Keep really lifting the pelvis off the tops of your thigh bones. Really support it independently from out of your lower abdomen. So the last one there, I'm going to let the hips swing downwards and forwards, rolling up through the spine from out of that position. Once again, let's breathe in Utkatasana, breathe out all the way through, breathing in here, let's reach the arms up and out this time, breathing out in this position, breathing in lengthen the spine, and as you breathe out, folding forwards. So it's the same position we were in before, but we're aiming to go possibly lower this time. Now, if your thighs and abdomen are together at this point, you'll be able to go quite forwards far and down, but otherwise you might need to bring the arms onto your thighs and practicing there. As I say, you might reach all the way through to the floor. So still aiming to feel the weight really evenly between the heel and the ball of the foot. Okay, you can take four breaths here, breathing in to soften the knees, breathing out to lengthen through the backs of the legs. Or if you're in this softer position, breathing out to lengthen through the backs of the legs, keep lengthening and opening your spine, and breathing in to soften. Breathing out to lengthen your spine, keep the waist open, breastbone and spine hugging together. And last breath here. And once again, as you're in, we're just going to roll up through our spine and arriving back in Tadasana, the mountain. So just allowing the body again to organize itself in standing, having a sense of the elevation through the length of the spine, a sense of the legs through the pelvis into the thighs, knees, shins, feet, just grounding again. For our next posture, we're going to come into a Vinny Yoga version of Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior or Hero Pose 1. Let's just breathe in, breathe out, and take a stride along the length of the mat. You can draw up through the front thigh muscle, through the back of the thigh, and this lunge is what we're going to produce here. So it'll be inhalation to lunge, exhalation to draw out of the lunge. So really draw up through the kneecap and thigh muscles, especially on the front leg, and then lunge against your contraction. With the back leg, it's actually opening quite a lot over the front of the hip, over the front of the thigh. And the spine is moving up through the centre. So if you think about your legs beginning in your pelvis, extending on through into your thighs, so the hips and thigh action flow as part of the legs, and the spine through the centre is really lifting and opening. You need to get quite a lot of strength close to the base of the spine. Powerful lift in the muscles just in front of your tailbone, just above the pubic bone pulling back. Navel pulls to the spine and gathers the sides of the waist in with it. Breastbone and spine keep moving together. So now once you've got a sense of the legs are able to open and the spine to lift, adding your arms in to again help you really lengthen your spine. So just as we worked in the first sequence, this idea of opening space through the abdomen, opening space through the ribcage to release lengthen space through our whole spine, breathing out to return. Ideally, the shoulder blades release down the back as we're moving and coming through. Feeling that right from the tailbone, vertebra by vertebra, the spine is supporting itself upwards. And then, because it's lengthened up so much, and the back muscles are working so strongly, that's what produces that movement backwards. But it's essentially a creation of space within the body. 
and this part of the body keeps working hard rather than just stretching and letting go it's working quite hard so that's the last breath on this side it was aiming for six but it might have been a loosely counted six it often is with me <laughs> we're going to breathe in and breathe out and step the left leg forward so so once again just just establishing the position between the feet so um, as on the front side which I don't think I remember to say just check that your knee is above your heel so it should really be like that and also it's helpful with your front foot if you're lengthening from the heel to the ball of the foot that part of the foot very firmly down pad of your little toe down and sometimes people feel there isn't room enough room for the front knee and it goes shooting forward that's because the front of the hip on the back leg isn't opening enough so there's quite a lot of lengthening back in the back leg and so you can lift up without the back heel rising or you you can pull out with the back heel rising you definitely get more stretch if you keep the back heel down so it's the inhalation to come into the lunging action feeling secure and strong through the legs and then letting your spine lift up out of the center of your pelvis inhalation and exhalation to return so the legs opening through the hip connecting into the thigh knee shin foot and your spine really lifting up out of the center of your pelvis so locate the strength that supports your spine waist opening ribs opening shoulder blades slip down the back breastbone and spine still moving together and returning sometimes I notice that when people are practicing they let the head drop back lead into the crown of the head rather than the chin that that really stops me from moving try to lead into the crown and coming away so maybe it's another two here so breathing in and breathing out and the last one breathing in and breathing out and then from there we're going to step the back leg forward so we come right up to the front of the mat so well done let's just spend a moment again to absorb what we've been doing to realign the body and from the inside again feeling that the feet can relax and really ground that the tailbone can sink and the spine elevate of the energy drawing up through our legs to support us front and back of legs back muscles and abdominal muscles working to support us and allowing the breath to relax especially letting the exhalation lengthen so we're going to in a second just flow forwards into the forward bend where we were a few moments ago and then we're going to step the left leg back and behind us so let's say we'll flow through the way we did a few moments ago strength drawing up through our legs space through the trunk of the body exhalation to pass through our utkatasana position and to flow the spine forwards and downwards now here we need to as i said release one leg it's going to be the left leg letting it release back and sometimes people are working so hard in the muscles at the very very tops of the hip joints in the groin it's the hip flexors really that it's impossible for the leg to release back so we need to think in terms of supporting our pelvis from the deep abdominal strength I'm really trying to get a broad and wide lift in your low, lower abdominal muscles so you feel the weight of the pelvis hovered off the tops of the thigh bones this will give you the opportunity to release the leg behind you otherwise if the hip flexors are working it's difficult to lengthen the leg going back and the other thing that we need to do is keep our spine nice and long between the tailbone and the crown so keep your shoulders broad keep your ribs broad keep your pelvis broad and releasing the left leg back so you can release it back low or you can release it back from quite a high position you don't need to send it high but you can 
once you've got the strength it can be high so that leg moves back left leg moves back and again we just need to think about our front knee and the ankle staying aligned so you might need to shuffle the back toes back and you can either bring that leg to the floor keeping the hip really opened or if you're feeling very strong you're going to keep it off the floor now this is a point at which you might find it helpful to use bricks because we're going to need to really draw the right hip back so that the left hip moves forward and our spine at this point becomes aligned two long lines to either side rather than one side short and one side curved so we need to pull the right hip back draw the left hip forward pull up through the back kneecap and front of thigh so that's important if the leg isn't going to go to the floor and then from here deep lift at the tailbone lower abdomen working navel pulls to the spine keep the ribs broad and wide shoulders broad and wide open your waist out of your hips open the ribs up all the way through like that so now from here it might be possible to again flow the arms up so we're in anjaneyasana crescent moon pose now if it's too strong if you're fine stay in that position if it's too strong bring your back knee down and still feel the spine able to open and release and breathing and then once again as we're ready from here we're going to flow the body forward so again if it feels more um, supported bring the blocks into either side of that front foot but essentially your abdominal muscles working back muscles working to step you forward let's breathe in and flow up breathing out just passing back down again to Tadasana so breathing here for a moment or two and then once again as you're ready inhalation to send the arms up lots of strength and energy through your legs spine lengthening and then from there we're going to come through Utkatasana, keep the spine as long as you can flowing forwards. Again, you could use your bricks or blocks here to support you. Thinking about the lower abdomen working hard to float and hover the pelvis away from the tops of the thigh bones and the lower spine opening and lengthening forward. So once you've got that, you transfer the weight this time to the left leg and release your right leg behind. If you're raising the leg high, you need to really use the gluteal muscles on that back leg. It doesn't need to lift high, can do. Bending your front knee and sending that leg back. So from here again, squaring the pelvis, drawing the left hip back. Might let that right knee come through to the floor and rolling up through your spine from there. Or if you're keeping the back leg raised, you need to keep drawing up through the kneecap and thigh on the back leg and maybe drawing your left hip back so you're quite square and your spine is able to lengthen evenly both sides so again the arms are moving but we need to really support our position through the waist through the ribs into the spine in the rib cage thoracic spine into the neck into the crown breathing in. So, three breaths with the knee raised or with the knee down and then from here we're going to flow back and up downward facing dog so on the exhalation let your spine flow forwards if you're in the raised leg position push into that back heel really lengthen if you want once the hands get to the floor let the back knee lift up breathing in breathing out we're going to join the feet together thighs and abdomen come together walking the hands back as you need to stretch back until the sitting bones come above your heels we're going to flow through downward facing dog so once again that powerful lift in the lower abdomen navel pulls to the spine breastbone and spine draw towards each other shoulder blades are wide lifting up the back behind us breathing here breath really dives back so now from here we could just work through a dynamic cobra and that would be that we pass through towards the plank chaturanga dandasana so breathing in breathing out pressing into your heels direct the tailbone to the heels give a powerful lift in the lower abdomen collarbones open 
elbows bend, pointing backwards, knees, chest, chin, palm to the floor. Let the pubic bone anchor using your back muscles. Lift from out of the strength of the back muscles. Open space in your waist forwards, space in your ribs forwards, back muscles working, chest up. So breastbone and spine keep moving towards each other. Keep tapering in at the base of the ribcage. Breathing. And then from here, lift initially from out of your abdomen. Flow back and up again. Send the sitting bones back to above your heels. Lots of lift through your abdominal muscles. Open through the sides of the ribs waist. Right back into your sitting bones, ears and arms in line. Breathing. Just allowing the spine to really relax and to let go. And then as you're ready, on an exhalation, let's bend the knees, coming down into the child's pose. Send the hips back and towards the heels and just relaxing the shoulders. If there is any weight going through the neck, think about stacking the fists underneath the forehead. But otherwise, just really letting go. Allowing your exhalation to lengthen. Feeling that the back of the spine can soften and relax. And we're going to let the arms sweep forwards again. And then try to keep the left sitting bone as close as we can to the left heel, allowing the spine to sway towards the right side. Walking into the left fingertips, really opening through the left side of the trunk. You can breathe into the left side of the rib cage and breathing out, let the spine lengthen. Let the left sitting bone sink down, a couple of breaths more. And then once again, as you're ready, just swaying the spine back to the centre. Really letting the spine lengthen and open in the middle here. And then again, keeping the right sitting bone very close to the right heel. Gently swaying the spine around towards the left side. And again here, breathing into the right side of the chest this time. Edging and walking into the right fingertips. Breathing. And then once again, just gently letting the spine open forwards. Walking it back to the centre. Lots of space all through the whole spine. And again, we can roll up through the spine, passing through Vedrasana. And let's bring ourselves onto the back of the body, just to spend a few moments letting go and relaxing. And we can work a little passive back bend being here, allowing the legs to slide away from us in line with the hip joints. Feeling that there's lots of space through the spine. If you feel that you haven't got enough space between the joints of the spine, just lift the ribs up and open the waist out of the hips. Support the head, lengthen the neck from between the shoulder blades. And the spine feels relaxed and settled. We can allow the arms to move up and back and behind us. So again, let the sides of your body open. Relaxing between the shoulder blades and the rib cage. And then letting the weight of the shoulders soften into the mat, the weight of the hips soften into the mat, let the heels soften into the mat, the hands soften into the mat. Spending a few moments here to breathe. Perhaps being aware of the quality of the energy of the breath, any lightness that there may be to the breath here. Any liveliness that there might be to the energy moving in and out of the chest. Observing over the front of the spine again, any sense of energy that there might be flowing. Spending a few moments to simply draw into the living presence within the body. Especially that living presence is very vivid around the breath and the energy of the breath in the chest and in the spine. But at the same time, it pervades the whole body. So 
taking a few moments to drift, to, to float, simply being, simply being a living presence. And as you're ready with an exhalation, allowing the arms to relax back and towards the sides, you might feel the spines gently soften towards the mat beneath you. Arms rolling outwards and we'll let the legs widen a little bit so the small of the back lets go and softens. Spending a moment here to simply absorb the effects of the yoga practice. And to begin to adjust the breath in length and speed towards something more suited to movement and activity again, to reach a stretch all through the body, reawakening the back muscles, muscles all around the spine. And we can hug the legs in and towards us, setting the hips on the mat two or three times in one direction, and setting the hips on the mat two or three times opposite direction. And then as you feel ready, let's roll ourselves over Coming on to one side, just resting on the side for a moment, and then pressing up away from the side towards the seated position. Om Shanti Namaste. Hope you enjoyed that practice. Well done, and thank you for watching. Please think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and hope to see you again soon on Movement Style. Always let me know how you're getting on with the videos. I like to know if people are enjoying them, if they find them helpful, or even what you'd like to see more of or what you'd like to see less of. So do get in touch. Thanks for watching.